time now, 6.36, and we do have someone alive with us via Skype from Chiba, Japan. Yeah, Mark Daniels. He's originally from Hazel Park. Mark, thank you for taking time to join us. Uh, where exactly are you located in regards to where all the destruction came through, and what is the scene right now? Well, I live in an area called uh, Kashiwa in Chiba. It's about 100 or so miles probably about 50 miles actually from the coastline. So in this area, we're experiencing um, aftershocks quite frequently actually, just a moment ago. Um, the clouds outside the window are ball shaped actually. All the clouds are very uh, in strange shapes and uh, the, oh, there's an oil factory or an oil plant about 10 to 30 miles away that's caught fire. And so there's a bit of smoke from that. Well, Mark, I, you seem very calm right now. Ha, did you feel anything when this happened? Oh, yes. I, I'm an English teacher out here in Japan, and uh, it, the earthquake initially happened at about 2.45 p.m., and I was just wrapping up a class with uh, three older ladies, and at, when the first earthquake first came, uh, they were quite calm, and they said, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. But as it, uh, as it increased in intensity, a lot of the students began to flee the school, but my, uh, my classroom refused to leave. So I was trying to get them to go under the table or to, uh, to get out, but uh, we were a bit delayed on that. So eventually, uh, we were able to get the students out of the school, and everybody on the street was hugging trees or grabbing on the signposts, and there's people screaming up and down the block. All the cars had stopped. Uh, it, was, it was pretty terrible. It was really hard. It uh, was difficult to stand, and we weren't uh, anywhere near the epicenter of the earthquake. On the heels of what you just described to us, can you also kind of give us the significance of uh, some of the destruction and damage that has taken place? We've seen pictures. Obviously, we're not there. You are, but still not quite sure how much you've had a chance to see or hear about. I, I am um, in the area that I lived at. There was nearly as much damage as what you're seeing on TV now. Um, outside the building, there there was some cracks in the ground actually, and um, a lot of our own school, a lot of our equipment had fallen. Oh, was a aftershock right now. Sorry. Were those cracks in the concrete or? <laughs> yeah, there was there's cracks in the the, the street itself. Um, computers had been knocked over, all of our materials, and so uh, our our the owner of the school had come in, and we were allowed to go home. And so once I returned home and turned on the TV, I was able to see the tsunami hitting the eastern side of Japan live. And it was just surreal, um, widespread devastation. I mean, entire farmlands destroyed. There were cars being launched. And I think at one point in time, probably the saddest moment was when uh, I saw these cars driving down the road. And the tsunami was just behind them, and they hit a traffic block. This is big traffic jam with people. So all these people started getting out of the cars and running down the road. But the, the shot had changed at that moment. But you could see the tsunami on their heels and just... If they could get away or not, I just don't know, but terrible, very terrible today. That is an image I'm sure you'll have for the rest of your life. We just received Sorry. a word, Mark, that the tsunami has carried away a ship with 100 people on board. This is according to Japanese officials. I know you're getting a lot of news reports there. Have you talked with people who are even closer to the epicenter, uh, to the, the actual where the tsunami hit? My wife's... Um, Friends actually have some family living up in that area, so we've been trying to get uh, in contact with them, but we've been able, unable to do that. But uh, people living further north um, where this actually occurred had been calling. Oh, at first we couldn't even get a hold of them <laughs> with the phones. All the phones were down for the longest time. But um, from what I understand from people um, writing about on blogs and such, uh, it's, it's really bad. There's blackouts over most of Chiba. Um, Again, with the oil plants catching fire, and from the coastal line, a lot of people are missing, and entire shopping malls have been destroyed. So, is, um, that, is, is that a heavily populated area right there in the coast? Or we're talking about the northern area where uh, the tsunami came uh, inland. Luckily, not as much as uh, as Tokyo or a major city. Um, a lot of this damage occurred in Sendai and Aomori, which are basically farmland type areas, more rural. So the cities are a bit smaller and the populace is a bit not as dense. But uh, the earthquakes were felt as far as Tokyo. And from what I've seen, some churches had glass ceilings that collapsed on a wedding party I heard about, which is just awful. Um, uh, there's, there's been images on TV of um, different office buildings, even in Tokyo, just things falling over left and right. My own home had some... Uh, some damage downstairs with dishes and such, but that was very minor.
My word, it really is unbelievable. What, <laughs> what do you plan to do next, Mark? I know it's a bit overwhelming right now. Well, as from what I understand, the Tokyo International Airport is actually closed. All the flights are grounded. And the Sendai Airport, where this occurred, I watched that get covered in about 20 feet of water. So all the airports are down. There's no way, of course, going home. So for tonight, I've got two, uh, two children and a wife that's downstairs. So we moved everything downstairs. We've packed some bags for, with emergency rations, clothing, and such. And we're basically just, we're going to be taking shifts tonight um, just to make sure that nothing is on fire, that fire is not spreading from the, uh, the oil plant down the road, uh, and just making sure that, you know, we have a, a way out if we need to get out of here. But as far as future plans, it's really just waiting us out and hopefully uh, the damage isn't as bad as it seems. Well, Mark Daniels, our prayers are with you and your family and, and those around you. Thank you so much for the wonderful updates this morning in regards to the information. Mark Daniels, originally from Hazel Park, now living in Chiba. We do wish you the best. Thanks again.